The BBR is currently one of the biggest Wi-Fi draft leagues on YouTube, so much so that it's even affiliated with Smogon. Anybody that's been watching me since 2017 to 2019 also knows that I participated in the founding father of draft leagues, the GBA, which also just so happens to be affiliated with Smogon as well. Now, I hadn't live commed a Wi-Fi match since the GBA up until just recently, and that was actually for the BBR's Summer Scramble Tour. And since then, I've been invited to join the BBR BBR as part of its main roster of coaches. So yes, we are going to be uploading Wi-Fi games alongside Showdown games on this channel at the same time. And that has only ever happened once before on this channel. If you guys aren't subscribed to the BBR's YouTube channel, which you should definitely go and do right after you're done with this video, you wouldn't know that they had their live draft stream yesterday. And if you did miss that stream, well, then you've come to the right place because we're gonna be going over the mons that we drafted. Now, I'm not kidding when I say this, and I don't believe that I have ever said this before in my history of playing Pokemon, or Draft League more specifically, but I truly believe that this, this team is the best draft team that I have ever drafted. It was literally one snipe away from being exactly everything that I wanted, and yet still I walked away feeling like I had won the draft. I do have to start this video off by saying that the BBR's terrestrialization rules are quite a bit different than the TGS's, the, the league that we put a video out for two days ago, in that only Mons 10 points and below, and some 11s, and even with the Mons 10 and below, there are some exceptions, can terrestrialize. And you only get one Terra Captain, and it can only Terra into two designated types before the season starts. So you really have to be selective with what Pokemon you choose to make your Terra Captain. But I think we nailed it. So the Habsols were picking eighth overall, and normally that's not very good out of 16 people. You wanna be near a wheel, ideally, as close as possible to wheel, and eighth is literally as far as you can get from a wheel. Fortunately, things like Ursaluna Blood Moon and Kel video went before my pick, so there was actually still a lot of really good things left on the board. And one thing that I always regret every time I draft a team is that I didn't start with the speedy stuff. Because as the draft moves along, the speedy stuff that's left is all garbage. So with that said, our first pick for BBR Season 7 is going to be the Ghost Horse Spectrier. Now, Spectrier without Terra obviously is, is quite a bit worse, but I mean, it's Terra banned everywhere that it's still allowed. Spectrier might seem like a little bit of a reach for 8th overall, but I thought Spectrier is going to allow for a lot of flexibility with team building moving on because a ghost is something that's normally either not drafted or drafted as a much lower tier mon. The two primary ghosts that always go are Dragapult and Spectre. So being able to get one of the two, I was extremely happy. Now on the way back around, a lot of really good stuff went like uh, Galarian Slowking, Tornadus, Meow Scarada, a bunch of really good mons. But our second round pick was actually something that at the beginning of the generation, I didn't think was as good as it actually is. And I'm very happy to have this steel type on my team. It's also removal. It's also hazard setting. You guys know what it is. It's not Excadrill. It's the other ground steel, Iron Treads. Now, I've learned through actually watching this thing in Draft League that it can be quite devastating because it really just eats one of almost anything and is able to dish out damage really easily. It's able to get up hazards, which, which helps support the team around it, as well as itself. Uh, and it has momentum. Volt Switch is actually extremely underrated. Uh, on Iron Treads because typically you don't want to be switching in your ground types on, on Iron Treads. Like they, they do end up taking a lot of damage. So having Volt Switch on a Mon that isn't an electric type is actually really, really cool. I'm happy to have this thing. I'm glad it's on the team. And we're going to keep today's video a lot more brief and short than the last one because I didn't like that the last one went 30 minutes. The, the original recording was actually 45. So we're going to go through these picks at hyperspeed. If you guys watched the last video, you know that I mentioned uh, there's a certain category of Mon, a certain typing that I always happen to miss out on the good ones of, and uh, that is a fairy. So our third pick overall was something that I've been using a lot on the ladder recently and that I think is extremely strong into this metagame specifically, and that is going to be Primarina. Now, Primarina also has momentum, and that's kind of what I wanted to build my team around. I wanted a lot of momentum on my mons uh, to get in my stuff that's extremely threatening, like Spectre, but don't be fooled. 
Primarina on its own is extremely threatening. Of course, that's super high base special attack, able to spam Specs moves, but now it has Flip Turn, right? Torrent Aqua Jet toward Flip Turn, right? So it gets a boost on its on its physical moves when it's low. It has the Calm Mind sets, the Whirlpool Paris Trap sets. Primarina can do a lot, and its typing is super good. Only being weak to three types being Poison, Electric, and Grass, and Iron Treads is immune to one and resists another one of those. So it's really just Grass that hits both. So now let's go get ourselves some Grass checks, shall we? So at this point in the draft, actually, this is really funny. I had the this whole draft plan laid out. I was like super stoked. I was like, okay, cool. If I can get these pieces, that's awesome. It's now round three and I picked Primarina and immediately after my pick, two of the Mons in succession that were on my draft plan get taken. Dragonite and Glamora. And I'm just like, well, gotta rework everything. I waited until the pick came back around to me and I looked at the board and I was like, huh, why is this still here? This should have definitely been taken before round four because this Mon is extremely undervalued and it's monotyping is really, really good. And so the Montreal Habsols end up with Cinderace. So now I have another hazard remover, of course, to pair with Treads. We've got uh, Court Change as an option. We have Will-O-Wisp, we have uh, U-Turn for Momentum, Swords Dance, and Bulk Up. Swords Dance is extremely underrated on Cinderace. It's very threatening, uh, especially because it gets Double Edge and Quick Attack, so it gets a stab if it turns into a normal type, and if it wants to stay a fire type, it can do that too. All it has to do is flex into Blaze as its ability. Two forms of priority, Quick Attack and Sucker Punch, obviously. Really nice. Primarina's got Aqua Jet. Uh, something that I knew I was going to struggle with on this build on this team was going to be priority, but I was okay with that, especially if I was able to get every piece that I needed. Speaking of every piece, our next mon on the team is something that has eluded me. The last time it was on my team was my championship winning NPL team, and that is going to be Yuxi. Now, Yuxi is awesome for a lot of reasons. It's extremely tanky, right? It's got a lot of really good utility options and like Thunder Wave, Encore, all of that stuff. Gets Memento, so it can really open up another Mon for you. And it can also set up. It can also be a dangerous Mon in a matchup if it needs to be. That's that's something that you need from a defensive Pokemon like this is the ability to still do work offensively if called on for, right? Uh, but right now, the rest of my team has a lot of really good offense, right? We've got, we've got the Spectre, the Treads, the Primarina, and the Cinderace that can all hit extremely hard if they want. To, but they can also run more utility sets, literally all of them. And Yuxi is the same, but it's more geared toward defense primarily. So far with the team, I think that we're doing a really good job of, of getting a good balance build here. And this is all for one Mon. This is all focused on getting one Mon next round right after Yuxi. And if I get it, I don't have to worry that much about the rest of my draft. There's just a few little other roles that I need to fill out. Our next Mon on the team is going to be our Terramon. And so I looked at the pool of Terramons and there was some interesting stuff. Like you could Terra Don Dozo, for example, but like you only get two typings. Rest is kind of obvious on the set, right? Uh, that's It's always going to be rest. I already have a water type. Uh, so I tried not to plan my, my draft around Don Dozo specifically, but there was an interesting typing. There was a fighting type that I wanted, specifically had the same type as a fighting type that worked really well with Spectrier in the past, and now it can Terra. And before I reveal what it is, I will say I wanted two fighting types on this team, and we'll get to that later, but I think that the best mons to pair with Spectrier are fighting types. Reason being that they can come in on the dark moves, some of them can come in on the ghost moves, and they can hit those mons really hard. In particular, when you pair fighting with Dark, you have a Mon that can basically bully all of Spectrier's checks. And funny enough, it is one of the best Spectrier checks itself prior to Gen 9, because now Spectrier gets Draining Kiss. And I don't think this Mon would be as good into Spectrier, but doesn't matter, no one can check us with it because it's on our team. Say hello to Terra, Poison, and Fairy, Scrafty. Why did I choose Poison Fairy. So I have to clarify this. this is the one bit of the video that's going to be a little bit longer, okay? Poison resists Fairy, obviously. That, that one should be clear. Uh, it also prevents Scrafty from getting poisoned itself, which is something that can hinder it uh, if it wants to run an ability other than Shed Skin. Because Shed Skin's awesome, obviously, but Intimidate and Moxie are just as good. Fairy I got because I wanted Scrafty to be able to hit a lot of the top tier metagames super effectively. And a lot of the top tier stuff, think Garchomp, Valiant, Roaring Moon, all of those Pokemon, right? You got all of your dragons, you've got a, a bunch of fightings up there, you've got a, a lot of things that are really, really weak to Fairy, like Urshifu single, right? So I wanted Scrafty to be able to either bulk up, 
Dragon Dance, or newly added to its move pool this gen, Swords Dance, and be able to just go on mini sweeps mid game. Really open up the door for Spectre here, or anything else in the back that I'm thinking of sweeping with. And there's a few other mons on the team that can do that. So why did I pick Scrafty for my Terramon? It kind of seems like it's it's a little too slow for that, but really the, the ability to have three different kinds of setup moves for a physical attacker, one with a good base typing, honestly, dark fighting is not a bad typing, and you can remove that typing, get rid of your 4X weakness, and on top of that, just be a nuisance, right? It can, it can run really, really bulky sets, and if you turn into a poison type and you got like rest talk or rest shed skin, right? It's It, it can become very difficult to deal with. So I wanted a, a big threat, especially a setup mon. I think the reason that Sarah Ledge is such a good Terramon, honestly, is because its abilities, uh, as well as the fact that it can set up multiple ways, right? It's got bulk up and swords dance. Uh, it has priority, which Scrafty doesn't have, but that's why it's even better than Scrafty, obviously, is because of the priority. Uh, as well as the recovery move, Scrafty does have that in Drain Punch, uh, but Bitter Blade hits more neutrally across the board. That's also what makes it better. And of course, you got like Poltergeist, and you got the, the, the Terra Blast, right, that you splash on there when it's a Terramon. Uh, and its abilities are insane for it, right? Weak Armor, you got uh, Flash Fire, both of those are really good. So it's, it like can literally come in on Will-O-Wisp and be a bigger threat than it was before. Uh, it can come in on a, a physical attack and boost its speed to plus two and it immediately threaten what's in front of it. It can sit in front of something and bulk up and wait for itself to get hit. Uh, it has Endure sets, right, which which suddenly become a massive threat with weakness policy, for example. A Scrafty is Sarah Legend Home, right? That's that's literally how I'm, I'm looking at it, is that it has a lot of the same qualities, three really good abilities alongside multiple setup options and, like, good bulk when necessary, like really good bulk. I think that Scrafty is the diamond in the rough and I hope to show you guys just how good it is this season. Moving on from there into round seven. Now at this point, I was looking at my draft plan and I'm like, okay, if I can get my seventh and eighth Mon, literally the la the remaining points don't matter. And there's still a lot of them even after those two picks, funny enough. But I was like, I'll have filled out pretty much all my roles. And then from that point on, I'm just getting stuff that's checking specific threats to my team. So we have to complete the Fairy Dragon Steel Core because if you don't, then it's not a good draft team. <laughs> I love people that think that way. Uh, but we are getting a dragon in round seven. Uh, and I looked at my speed tiers. I, I knew where I was going with them. I had really high speed in Spectre and Cinderace and Treads even. And I had like really low speed with like Scrafty and Primarina. Yuxi's 95, but it never really runs 95 unless it needs to specifically encore a like particular threat. We ended up with a dragon. I wanted a dragon flying. Initially, I wanted Dragonite, but this thing was on the board. It wasn't too expensive, uh, and I've used it before, and I really liked it. So uh, on our team now is Salamence. Now, Salamence is really cool with Scrafty, actually, because now I have Intimidate Shuffling, which is awesome. It also has Moxie, so it basically has the same abilities as Scrafty. So they're both threats equally in the same ways, but can be run completely differently from each other every single week, which I find awesome. So this is like basically my top seven. These these seven mons are gonna be coming on rotation. And the last four, there is one in particular in the last four that could come a lot more often than the rest, but definitely Salamence is part of my top seven. I think Mensa is awesome. Choice Scarfer, really good choice scarfing speed. And I'm not 100% sure if it got other moves. I think it got Temper Flare, which is really cool actually, because now it doesn't have to run Fire Fang. Uh, and also if it, like you Earthquake, a Skarmory, right? And then you can Temper Flare and it does double damage. So that's awesome. Round eight. Now this one's going to look weird, but uh, I've learned a lot about drafting over the last two years. Largely in part to, I want to shout out Kcrick, Kynan, Rai, Sean, L5, and Dark Rai. These were my captains, co-captains, and uh, Kynan is the best drafter in Draft League. He's considered to be the, be the best team drafter in all of Draft League. And I learned a lot from them. I, I learned a lot of important things about drafting. Uh, and I think that I've carried those over and they're, they're finally starting to click. I saw that I needed a grounded poison. At this point, I have like 30 points or something like that. And I did not want to lose this grounded poison in particular because I think it's one of the best grounded poisons at actually checking Valiant and Enamorous. And I keep bringing those two up but they are two of the most dangerous fairies uh now grounded poison you think okay well how is it going to take on an amorous and amorous has earth power yeah well muck has really good spadef so it does not care and i think muck is extremely underrated and it was really really cheap i think it was three or four points uh i think three but 
yeah, Muck's just super cheap. So with 30 points remaining, round eight, I grab Muck. It looks completely absurd, but it was an absolute necessity to the team. Now you look at the team, Treads is unaffected by T-Spike. Cinderace can run boots. Uxie's off the ground. Scrafty has shed skin. Salamence is off the ground. So all it's really hitting is like Primarina and Spectre. You'd think like you don't really need a grounded poison. Yeah, okay. But if I'm gonna get a poison type anyway, might as well be grounded and make it extremely good into Val and Enamorous. Muck is mainly going to be for those two, but it can check a plethora of other fairies. And I'm really happy with it. And it's another form of priority on the team, right? You got Shadow Sneak now. I think Muck is fantastic and it's extremely undervalued at three points. I think it should be like four or five. Moving on to the next round. Now, from this point on, I wanted two more ones and I was done. That was, that was the remainder of my points. I may have picked these out of order because I got sniped, right? I did say that earlier, I got sniped. Round nine comes around and I'm like, okay, cool. I need to fill in a little bit of a speed gap. Iron Treads is 106 and then it jumps to Cinderace's 119 and I wanted to fill that just a little bit. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting it, screw it. I've been using it a ton lately. Uh, it's been on my uh, DPL teams, even though those weren't my drafts necessarily, uh, but they were the teams that I was using. Uh, and it was on a recent team of mine, maybe even two recent teams of mine in uh, other showdown leagues that like weren't upload leagues, right? But I'm like, all right, screw it. I'm biting the bullet. It's a good mon. It's got a lot of really good utility and it can be extremely dangerous and you have to prep for it. You, you, you have to prep for it. My team's basically done. I have like my top seven, top eight. I don't need anything else really, but I'm gonna get this anyway, just because it's another threat. And so round nine, we got Thunderous. That's right, Thundy Eye is on the team, 111 speed, really cool. It outspeeds, outspeeds Lotties, right? That's awesome. It's also a flying check. That is something that I didn't really have. Treads is my only flying check and that's kind of dangerous. I don't want to run into like hurricane spam the team and be just like straight up lose because Treads does not take hits well on the special side. So yeah, if I run into Tornadus, I'm basically dead. Thunderous can somewhat check Tornadus Therian. So that's kind of why it's on here. I did need an electric type and I was like, ah, eh, might as well get another one off the ground. Right now I have three mons off the ground. Earth Quake looked really good into me in the first four mons and then suddenly I just picked up a bunch of ground immunities so I've got a lot of really good checks I thought about getting a grass on the team didn't end up doing it because I'm like I think there's other bigger priorities so yeah I got thunderous and right here my heart was broken Mr. Gentleman Thomas sniped me this round picked up the mon that I was going to finish off my team with the remainder of my points I was going to get mean Shao. Now, I did mention earlier, I think the best pairings with Spectre is two fighting types on a team. One more defensive and one more offensive. When I played in DPL season six and our team won, a large part of that was our Spectre team in Sword and Shield. And that team had Cobalion and Pangoro. And I wanted something similar. So Treads was kind of acting as the steel substitute for Cobalion. Uh, we had a stack attack on that team as well. So I was like, cool, I upgraded the steel always. Uh, and I had Scrafty and I was like, cool, this is awesome. Now Scrafty doesn't get momentum. So I was like, okay, if my other fighting type can get momentum, that'd be awesome. So I was like gunning for Mean Shao and then it gets taken. And I'm just like, oh no, come on, man. I was so close. The team was perfect. But I still think that I did a good job with these last picks. So one thing that I noticed is that my team had two stealth rockers in Treads and Uxie. Uxie almost always wants to run rocks, that's fine. Treads doesn't always want to run it, but it, can, it still can. And it's, it's fine when it has rocks on its moveset. It's not like it's missing a massive move. It doesn't typically have like insane for move slot syndrome like Tusk does. But something I didn't have was spikes. And I was looking through all the spikers. I was like, okay, what type do I get? What what do I do? How can I how can I get a spiker here? And I was looking for grass type spikers and they all sucked or they were all gone. And I was like, nope, can't can't do that. Can't get bramble gas because then I'd have two ghosts. I got more ghost problems. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. I started looking at stuff that I was like really weak to. And I was like, oh, this is here. That works. So we ended up getting Quagsire, round 10. I know it doesn't look all that impressive. This one is eight points, funny enough, but Quag is really cool because it has stealth rocks, it has spikes, it has T spikes, and it's got a lot of really good utility. <laughs> like there, that's just all there is to it, right? My team is not that grass weak. Cinderace is a check, Salamence is a check, Muck is a check, Thunderous is a check. So Quagsire is not really getting pressured too heavily and spikes are really good with this team. 
I'm not usually a huge fan of Quagsire, but I thought that it really fit this team well. And then I had a few points left, very few. I noticed that uh, my ghost switchin was Scrafty and only Scrafty. Now I, I do have one of the premier ghosts, obviously, in Spectre. There are a few others. There's Petrunt, there's uh, Dragapult, there's just Shadow Balls being clicked and me not being able to switch in on them, like at all. So I wanted to at least have a switch in something. I decided to go with Greedent. Now Greedent's not all that impressive. We won't go over too much with it, but it's it's got some stuff. It's got some stuff going for it. Uh, it can definitely do some things, right? It can weaken stuff in a range of Spectre or funny enough. Uh, and of course, it's got really big HP, right? I, I just wanted something bulky that could check Ghost to a certain extent. And I think Greedent's fine for that. It's it's a presence on the team. It's something that you do have to respect. Like you can't just bring uh, your Sweeper be a Scarf Shadow Ball anymore, right? Like it's it's not necessarily going to work because there is a normal type there and it can tank the tank the hits and it loses you momentum essentially because Greedent does have decent attack it can hit you actually quite hard uh and it does have access to like swords dance and stuff so uh it is something that you have to be careful of but uh yeah that's our team not much more to say uh, i do think this is honestly my best draft ever if not in a very very long time i, I really enjoy the way that this looks uh, i'm loving the way that it feels in the builder already looking at matchups coming up it's a, it's a good one. Uh, it's a very good draft. So let me know what you guys think. I think it's awesome. Uh, I could be wrong though. This could be terrible. King L5 will tell me in the comments because he hates me. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy, uh, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Also go and check out all the, the other coaches in the description down below. They're also putting out their draft analysis videos. They either did it yesterday or they're doing it today. Uh, so it's definitely not something that you're going to want to miss uh, because a lot of them do have really good teams. Uh, but I think that we have one of the best teams. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.